How do we avoid being blindsided by the future? How can we see opportunities that others miss? I really care about how people make decisions and how to make them differently in different contexts. We've increasingly become a society of specialists where focus and expertise are highly valued. And in today's hyper-connected world, we need more generalists. I try in my talks to help you see the world differently. Where some people say, so what? The savvy observer looks at seemingly irrelevant data and connects the dots. When facing massive uncertainty, it's better to be a generalist. It's the ability to see across areas of specialization that allows you to navigate uncertainty with greater success. In today's highly interdependent world, what we need is integrated thinking. We need a generalist approach to help us navigate uncertainty and spot opportunity. Throughout my career as an investor, as an academic, and as an advisor to numerous companies, I have found value in adopting this generalist approach. Important insights can come from the most unlikely of sources. If you pull up Sotheby's common stock price chart mm. and pull it back to 1988 when that stock went public, yeah. what you see is a seismograph. But just look at this for a second. It's a flat line and it has blips up like a seismograph might have. First blip, October 89. Second blip, April 99. Third one, May 07. Well, those dates are somewhat interesting, aren't they, if you're interested in booms and busts? And so when I go back and I look at what was happening to the art markets in 1989, world record art prices set by Japanese buyers. Three months later, the Nikkei peaked. It hasn't gone anywhere near that level since. So by looking at art markets, we're able to get a leading glimpse into corporate confidence. Someone who pays $100 million for a painting, they're usually a corporate or economic leader in their society. And as such, it's not surprising that if you look at a chart of corporate M&A activity, you see a similar pattern. And so this is a leading indicator of leading indicators of confidence. One of the most powerful indicators of bubbly dynamics in the world is hubris and hubris is easily visible in the world's tallest skyscrapers. 1929, three buildings competed for the world's tallest tower. 40 Wall Street, the Chrysler Building, and the Empire State Building. And then you had the Great Depression. 73 and 74, you had the Sears Tower and the World Trade Center, followed by a decade of stagflation. 1997, the world's tallest tower status moved to Kuala Lumpur with the Petronas Towers basically ground zero of the Asian financial crisis. Next time you read in the newspaper that country X is building the world's tallest skyscraper, that should be interpreted by investors, policymakers, and interested citizens alike as a large flashing warning sign. By taking a bigger picture, longer run view and perspective, you can develop the flexibility you need to navigate what is likely to be a chaotic future. So how is it that demand for protein in China can affect regime stability elsewhere in the world? So at $5,000 per capita of GDP, you start consuming more meat. Makes sense. I've got my housing covered. I've had the bowl of rice. The kids are educated. I'm paying the doctor's bills. Hmm, let me put some chicken on that rice. Uh-oh. Where's China? It's right there at the tipping point. My argument is China is on the verge right now of increasing meat consumption per capita in a noticeable way. When we hear stories of China buying Smithfield Foods, is that the beginning or, e or end of a problem? I think that's the very beginning. The demand for protein in China could rise so dramatically that it's gonna cause inordinate pressures on all grains, as all feed. This is a big deal. Food riots occur when the UN food price index is at 210 or above for any sustained period of time. Want to guess where the UN food price index is today? 210, right there. Big question, which direction do food prices go? When you get these data points in front of you, you're reading the newspaper and you're hearing about ethanol policy. Ah, what the, what the heck does that have to do with my global investment policy portfolio that has some exposure here? Or I'm in a fund over here, why do I need to care about ethanol? You do! By paying attention to US ethanol policy, you would have seen a shock in the demand for grains. And that ripple would have flown through any country that had high food vulnerability. 
North Africa comes to mind, and perhaps the Arab Spring was a direct result of U.S. ethanol policy. Think about different scenarios. Look at different dots, meaning see who's generating wealth how, see who's behaving how and why. Read things like People magazine. Look at newsstands when you're walking through airports and train stations, etc., to see what's selling. All of us can benefit from adopting a generalist approach. You do not need to have a PhD in economics. You do not need to have a PhD in psychology. You don't need to be an expert. It simply requires opening our eyes, identifying the dots, and finding meaningful connections between them. These dots are out there for all of us to see.